109 Minions, it is a beautiful day for learning. I am glad you're here. I got my summer braids on, so I am ready to have a wonderful learning day. Let's start by singing, where is, ready? Where is Ed Markey? Where is Natalie? Where is Brayden? Where is Cassandra? Where is Annis? Where is Isabel? Where is Anthony? Where is Draven? Where is Kennedy? Where is Anderson? Where is Valentina? Where is Kimberly? Where is Sophia? Where is Emily? Where is Aria? Where is Sebastian? Where is Junalise? Where is Apriana? Where is Mariana? Where is Alexia? Where is Jaden? Where is Manuel? Here I am. Pop up. Here I am. How are you today, sir? How are you today, ma'am? Very well, I thank you. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. And my share today is yesterday. I dropped a pot of a plant and it broke and I got dirt all over my rug. So now I have to clean my rug. It's a whole shenanigans. Let's do our poem. This is A Hunting We Will Go. Ready? Do it with me. A hunting we will go. Oh, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. We'll catch a fox and put him in a box and then we'll let him go. Let's look for sight words in here. What sight words do you see? A spells A and A spells A. What else? What word is this? Wee, W-E spells wee, wee, wee. What about this one? Will, W-I-L-L spells will, will, will. What about this word? Go, G-O spells go, go, go. What about that word? And, A-N-D spells and, and, and. What about this word? In, I, N spells in, in, in. Awesome. Let's read our message. Today is Monday, June 1st, 2020. Dear Room 109 Minions, Hello. Today is the first day of June. It is the last month of school before summer vacation. Love, Miss Minion. That's it. Today is the first day of June, the last month of school, because after June comes July and August, where there's no school. It's summer vacation. And then in September, you're going to go back to school, but not with me. I mean, with me. You'll see me every day. I'm going to come visit you. You're going to be so sick of me. But you'll be in first grade with Miss Senior and Miss LaFaca, but I'm still going to come every day and see you because, oh my goodness, am I going to miss you so much. Let's do some sight words. We are still reviewing these words. Ready? What word is this? Mom. M-O-M -M spells mom, mom, mom. What word is this? Came. C-A-M-E spells came, came, came. Came. What word is this? They. T-H-E-Y spells they, they, they. What word is this? No. N-O spells no, no, no. And this one is is. I-S spells is, is, is. Pause the video now and rainbow write our review sight words. Pausa el video ahora y escribe a Croyes Ris nuestras palabras de revisión. There, readers. So, 
I was talking to Miss Berman this morning, and she told me that she was on a Zoom meeting with all these important people from Boston. And she was saying, you know, those kindergartners, they're only in kindergarten, but they're already avid readers. When she told me this, my face was like, I was so happy. But actually, now that I think about it, happy might not even be the best word. Like, I'm happy a lot of the time. But in that moment, I could use a more descriptive word. I could say I was, hmm, super duper happy, or proud, or glad, or ecstatic. There's so many words I could use. Today, I want to teach you that when you're thinking about a character's feelings in a book, it helps to be really specific, as precise as you can be. Instead of just saying the boy is happy, it's good to think, hmm, is that the best word for it? And then try and find a just right word to describe what you mean. And we don't just do this for happy. We can do this for other feelings too, like sad. Instead of just saying my character is sad, he was happy and then he was sad and then he was happy again. We can use more precise language to describe how our characters are feeling. Right now, think about a time when you felt sad. Do you have one? I know that when I was a kid, my best friend moved away. And I remember and I felt so sad. But actually, sad isn't the best word. I did feel sad, but I could also use bigger, better, more precise words. I could say, that I felt lonely, or hurt, or alone, or I felt disappointed. There's lots of words I could use to describe how I feel. And my point is that readers don't just do this when they talk about how they feel. They do this when they talk about characters. They find really precise, just right words to describe how a character is feeling. So we've been looking at the carrot seed and we've been talking about the feelings of the little boy. We said he was sad because his mom and his brother and his dad, they all said it won't come up. And then in the end, he was happy because it came up. Today, as we read, I want we, us to think, can we find more precise words than just happy and sad? Let's try. The Carrot Seed by Ruth Krauss. Pictures by Crockett Johnson. Move this so the light's not all in the way. A little boy planted a carrot seed. His mother said, I'm afraid it won't come up. His father said, I'm afraid it won't come up. And his big brother said, it won't come up. How do we think the boy feels? You can say, I think the boy feels. Yeah, sad. But can we come up with a more precise word? Say, I think the boy feels because... Yeah, maybe the boy feels disappointed because he planted the seed, but it's not going to grow. Or maybe he feels embarrassed because everyone's kind of making fun of him, saying it's not going to come up. Or maybe he feels kind of dumb. Like he doesn't feel good about himself because he, he's trying to plant the seed and everyone's telling him he's wrong. There's a lot of words we could use here. Let's keep reading. Every day, the little boy pulled up the weeds around the seed and sprinkled the ground with water. But nothing came up. And nothing came up. Everyone kept saying it wouldn't come up. 
but he still pulled up the weeds around it every day and sprinkled the ground with water. How can we say he's feeling here? I would say maybe he's feeling hopeful. It's like when you think something's going to happen and you keep trying and you keep trying and you keep trying. Maybe he's feeling determined. Like he wants to try and try again. And then one day, a carrot came up. <gasps> How do you think he feels? Just as the little boy had known it would. Can you think of a more precise word? Not just happy. He probably feels happy. But can we think of an even better word? A more precise word to fit this situation? You can say, I think the boy feels mm because mm. Yeah, maybe he feels proud because he grew that giant carrot. Or maybe he feels accomplished because he did something that was really hard. There's a lot of words we could use to describe this character's feeling. All of them are right in their own way. Today and every day when you're reading books, I want you to keep on being an avid reader. Keep on noticing how the character feels. But then ask yourself, is that word the best word to describe how the character feels? Or could I use a more precise word? If you say the character feels happy or sad, could you think of something more specific? What kind of happy? Is it proud happy? Is it silly happy? What kind of happy? If it's sad, what kind of sad? Is it disappointed? Is it hurt? Is it lonely? What kind of sad is it? Think about how the character feels and use really precise words. Happy reading. Pause now to do your reading homework. Pause ahora para hacer tu tarea de lectura. Do a guided reading video of your choice. Practice reading the book with the video and then again on your own. You can access the links on my YouTube page or on my Google Doc. Haga un video de lectura guiada de su elección. Practique leyendo el libro con el video y luego nuevamente por su cuenta. Puede acceder a los enlaces en mi página de YouTube o en mi Google Doc. Hey there, writers! So, it is time to start maybe a new piece of writing. If you're still working on your persuasive piece about the trash, that's okay. Keep working on it. But I'm ready to start something new. So I'm going to show you what I'm working on so that when you're ready, you can try it too. I've been thinking since today is the first day of June and the beginning of summer, I was thinking we could write about some of the things we want to do this summer. We've spent a long time in our house, learning online, being on the computer, and I know I am so excited for it to be summer and for me to maybe do some different things other than watching TV in my house. So I'm going to write a book about it. I'm going to call it Things I Want to Do This Summer. And on every page, I'm going to write about a different thing I want to do when it's summer and when coronavirus is a little bit better and we can leave our house a little bit more. I'm so excited for this writing. Let's get. All right, I'm going to call this book my things I want to do this summer book. I'll start by writing the word things. Things. F -f thumb. T-H makes that f -f sound. Notice that I use an uppercase T there because it's my title. Every word in my title is going to start with one uppercase letter. Okay. Things. Thing in. Oh, I hear the sight word in. I N spells in, in, in. Thing. She go g. G, g, g. Things. S socks. And that makes sense with what we learned in phonics, remember? One thing, two things. We add the S to show more than one. I'm not just gonna write about one thing I wanna do this summer. I'm going to write about three things I wanna do this summer. Things, I, 
Any sight word. I spells I, and I, when it's its own word, is always uppercase. Things I want. Whoa, 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 window. Wah, ah, ah, oh, octopus, ah. Wah, n, 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 nest. Want t, t, turtle. Uh-oh, silly Miss Minion. Every word in the title needs an uppercase letter. Things I want to, ooh, sight word. T-O spells to, 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 to do, sight word. D-O spells do, do, do. Not do 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 do. Things I want to do. This. Ooh, sight word. T H I S spells this, this, this. Things I want to do. This. Uh oh. Can I fit it? I'm going to try. If not, you can always make it some extra space down here. Things I want to do this summer. Socks. So, uh, 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 you umbrella, uh. Some, m -m 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 mouse. Some, er, uh, ring. Things I want to do this summer. Bye. B Y spells bye bye bye, Miss Minion. And remember, your name always starts with an uppercase letter. All right, and hmm, what should I draw as my picture? Oh, I have an idea. I'm going to split up the page into a bunch of different boxes so I can draw all the things I want to do this summer. I'm going to draw a straight line down and a straight line across. Now I have four boxes so I can draw four things. And I'm gonna draw me going swimming in the lake because I wanna go swimming in the lake this summer and I wanna visit my family. So I'm gonna draw me with my family and I wanna eat ice cream this summer, of course. And I wanna eat ice cream and I wanna go to a beach. So many good things. Okay. And draw me in the lake, swimming in the lake.
Notice how I drew the pictures with the backgrounds for all of my pictures. Is it okay that I have two sons? Yeah. When I have one picture, then I should only have one son because there's not two sons ever outside. But this is a different picture with the sun than this. This is me at home with my family. This one's me at the beach. All right, I can add some labels. I can write beach, b b b b e e long e beach. Oh, c h makes that ch ch sound. I can write me, and my brother is Justin. J j j uh uh, just just t t in i n spells in. My brother Justin and my sister Sammy. Am. Oh, am. We know that word. Sam E. And I can write lake. A long A. K, -k, -k. K. Lake. Awesome. Today, your job is going to be to draw a cover kind of like mine. Get started on your Things You Want to Do This Summer book. I can't wait to read it. Pause now to do your writing homework. Pausa hora para hacer tu tarea de escritura. Start a book about the things you want to do this summer. Can you divide your cover page into squares so that you can draw pictures of more than one thing? I hope you still have blank writing books left. But if you don't, you can use pages in your journal. Comienza un libro sobre las cosas que quieres hacer este verano. Puedes dividir tus portadas en cuadra cuadrados para que puedas dibujar más de una cosa. Espero que aún te queden libros en blanco, pero si no puedes, puedes usar páginas en tu diario. mathematicians, I have two pieces of ribbon here, a blue piece and a pink piece. I want to figure out which piece of ribbon is shorter. All right, in order to figure that out, what should I do? Can I just look at them? Sometimes, but that's not how mathematicians do it. If I want to do it like a mathematician, I need to line them up. So I'm going to take the pink piece. I'm going to line it up so that it starts at the same spot as the blue piece. That's how we'll know which one's shorter. Okay, which one is longer? Which one is shorter? You can say the mm is longer. The mm is shorter. That's right, the blue ribbon is longer because it sticks out further. The pink ribbon is shorter because it doesn't stick out as far as the blue ribbon. Okay, so should I say the blue ribbon, that's my answer? No, that's not what the problem is asking me. Mathematicians think back and remember what the problem asked them. The problem asked me to find which ribbon was shorter. So what is my answer? That's right, the pink ribbon is my answer because the problem asked me to find the one that is shorter. What if it asked me to find the one that is longer? Then what would my answer be? Yes, then it would be the blue one because the blue one is longer, it sticks out further. Mathematicians focus extra hard on making sure they answer the question. You have to remember what the question is asking you and make sure you give the right answer. You don't want to tell them which one's longer if the question asked for which one is shorter. All right, my next question is what is longer? A six cube train or this pink ribbon? What should I do first to find that out? Should I just guess? No, mathematicians, Figure it out using math strategies like measuring. Okay, 
So I need to start by making a six cube train. One, two, three, four, five, six. Should I just leave it like that? No, 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 I have to measure it. So I make my train with six cubes. Should I measure like that or like this? No, mathematicians line it up when we measure. Okay, they start at the same spot. Which one's longer? Ooh, that's tough. They are the same. Well, almost the same. They are the same length. Let's try another one. What if I want to figure out what's longer? A seven cube train or my foot? What do I need to solve this problem? Did you say my foot and some cubes? You're right. Let me get out my foot. There it is. All right. Now I need to get out a seven cube train. Let's make it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Let's build the train. Now I need to measure. Should I measure it like that? No, I have to line it up. I'll line it up with my big toe. The start of my foot and the start of the cube, cube train will go to the same spot. All right, let's look. What's longer, my foot or the cube train? That's right, my foot is longer. What if the question asked which one's shorter? Then what would your answer be? Yes, then your answer would be the cube train. You ready to try some on your own? Here is your math homework. Este es tu tarea de matemáticas. Solve the following measurement problems. Make sure you line both items up at the same starting spot like I showed you. Make sure you answer the question. If the question says which one is shorter, make sure you say the one that is shorter not longer. Resuelva los siguientes problemas de medición. Asegurese de alinear ambos elementos en el mismo punto de partido como le mostré. Asegurate de responder la pregunta. Si las preguntas dicen cuál es más corto, asegurate de decir el que es más corto, no más largo. Which one is longer? Qual es más largo? Your foot or a 10 cube train? Pause the video while you measure. Which one is longer? Qual es más largo? Your arm or a six cube train? Pause the video while you measure. Which one is shorter? Notice this question asks for the one that is shorter, not longer, not bigger. Qual es más corto? Corto. Your finger or a five cube train? Pause the video while you measure. Which one is shorter? Qual es más corto? A ten cube train or a five cube train. Pause the video while you measure. Is there a way to know this answer without measuring using numbers? Hmm, think about it. Okay, today for phonics, we're going to be learning about compound words. Can you say that? Compound words. Again, 
Compound words. Say it with me. Compound words. Compound words are when you take two words and put them together to make one word. Let's look at these words. Think about what you notice as I read. Into. Today. Good night. Birthday. Inside. What do you notice? You can say, I notice. Yeah, each word is made up of two smaller words. Clap the words with me. Ready? Into. Into. Today. Today. Good night. Good night. Birthday. Birthday. Inside. Inside. Awesome. Notice that there's no space. When you have two different words, you put a space in between. But when it's a compound word, like today, you don't put a space. You squish them together because it's one word. It's made up of two words, but it's used as one word. Like today is a word. It's not today. It's today. Like that. Today for homework, you have two jobs. Number one is you're going to keep watching the video and play a game with me. Number two is you're going to practice your letter tracing. Phonics homework. Tarea Phonetica. Play the compound word game with me. Keep playing the video to watch it. Then practice your name and letter tracing. This is what we used to call writing center. Juega el juego de palabras compuesto conmigo. Sigue jugando el video para verlo. Luego practique el re restreo de su nombre y letra. Esto es lo que solíamos llamar writing center. Play the compound word game with me. I'm going to say two words and you have to put it together to make one word, a compound word. Ready? Cross walk. What's the word? Crosswalk. Firefly. What's the word? Firefly. Himself. What's the word? Himself. Air. Port. What's the word? Airport. Sun. Flower. What's the word? Sunflower. Somewhere. What's the word? Somewhere. Be. Come. What's the word? Become. Football. What's the word? Football. Basketball. What's the word? Basketball! Great job! Can you think of any more compound words? Writing center is, it's the one that looks like this. Give yourself a sticker. We're so close to our last prize and the end of online learning for kindergarten. Let's keep on going. Today was lesson 43. Great job! You'll never find another like me. <laughs>